Welcome, watch peeps, to a very special unboxing. This is a limited edition Unimatic, which is being launched today at 5 p.m. This is the time the video is going to be going out, hopefully. And uh, it's up to me to do the unboxing, give you a little uh, run through of the watch. I hope you enjoy it. So, I just got this and I'm going to share the experience with you without necessarily cutting my hands off, hopefully. So, oops, there we go. Let's see, what do we have here? Well, the brands, no, <laughs> no secret. It's pretty much pretty obvious what the brand is. By the way, I bought this watch. It's not a uh, collaboration or anything. So what do we have here? Okay, this should give you an idea. This is a limited edition print. This is a Soyuz, a Soyuz capsule, 19 out of 200. Uh, all Unimatic watches are uh, limited editions, so this was to be expected. Nice little print. And here is the case. Uh, most Unimatics, I think all Unimatics now come in this really tough looking, tough looking, tough uh, Pelican case. And as you can see, it has the um, Apollo, Soyuz Apollo branding and the signature of the designer of the logos and the uh, designer of most of the uh, Soyuz um, furniture and internals of the uh, spacecraft and everything. And really tough case. Okay, so this is a space-themed watch. Unimatic is... Uh, well, not famous for it, but it's done something before on the Unimatic NASA uh, U1SS. Uh, <clears throat> I got one of those. The watch sold out in minutes when it was launched uh, at, for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. This is a little different. This is the Apollo Soyuz mission, which was in 1975, which was a in-orbit in docking between a Soyuz spacecraft and an Apollo module. So, let's get a look at the watch. Limited edition, one of 200 pieces. And there we have it. Nice little inside of the case with all the foam. <clears throat> Unimatic warranty card. Oh, this is like, oh, this is cool. It's plastic with the number 19 out of 200. And on the back, it's the, uh, like I said, it's a beautiful logo. Of the, uh, you can actually see the Apollo and the Soyuz spacecraft docking here in orbit around the Earth. There it is. Nice card. Well done. Like that. No instruction manual. Well done. Good. Just an electronic instruction manual. Don't want to print. No use printing something that is going to be non eco friendly and there's nobody's going to read anyway. So, what the heck? I congratulate you on that, Unimatic. So. Sticker off, and here's the watch. The watch, which is what you're really interested in. It's a cursory look, looks pretty good. Has this blue Cordura strap. The, uh, the dial is quite interesting. Let's go and have a closer look. So this is the Seiko Mecha Quartz. What exactly is that? Now it's a quartz movement that powers a mechanical chrono. Now, if you look at the um, dials here, we've got, uh, this is the minute counter, this is a one hour, one hour chrono, and this one the, uh, on the, at the three o'clock isn't actually a, um, it has nothing to do with a chrono, it's just a 24 hour marker, so basically it's working as a night and day indicator. Apart from that, the dial's quite clean in the uh, usual unimatic fashion. The, um, the tachymeter scale, this is, okay, this, let's, uh, let's close this down. It has a movable, ratchetable, unidirectional tachymeter scale, which, which in my opinion is pretty useless. I mean, this isn't a dive watch, even though it is a 300 meter water resistant, you're not going to be doing any diving with this, but even then you're not going to be using a, you're not going to be timing anything. You're not going to be timing how fast a fish is going underwater. So no way. 
But it's a nice gimmick, I suppose. Gives it something. And it's got screw down pushers, of course. These are made so that you do not push the buttons when you're underwater, even if you even if you ever take it underwater. And there we go. And let's start the chrono. Very smooth uh, movement of the second hand. You'd be fooled into thinking this is actually a not an automatic movement with such a smooth movement of the crown of the uh, second hand, but it's not. It's uh, mecha quartz, and I think these uh, mecha quartz movement don't get the, the 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 appreciation they should. They're still very precise, and not having a this watch does not have a running seconds hand. So uh, when the chrono is not working, you you wouldn't even think it's a it's a it's a quartz watch because you don't get a ticking second hand. So that's quite cool in my opinion. A very toolish case, of course, uh, like uh, all unimatics. Fine brushing, all over. No uh, no chamfering, no shiny bits, no concession to luxury at all. On the other side, we have the oversized Unimatic crown with the Unimatic logo. And on the back, let's get some a look. We have uh, a graphic of the um, of probably what is the docking procedure of the two craft. Limited number and the autograph of the uh, Russian architect of uh, Galina. You can just read there, Galina. Balashova. She is the unsung uh, hero of the Soyuz program. She did a lot of the design for the parts of the, the insides and the logo, of course, but uh, she didn't get any recognition for it, which is quite sad, to be honest. And uh, there we go. Black dial, uh, vintage patina, four patina loom, great strap, big and solid. Unimatic signed buckle. So there you go. All in all, I think that's a smart piece. Uh, the uh, the logo just gives it that flash of color which it needs. So the big question now is: Does this watch have any loom to talk about? Now, since I'm a loom nerd, it deserves a good old loom shot. So let's get that going. Well. No, not disappointing. It's quite good. A lot of loom on the hands and on the running seconds chrono hand. A bit less on the indices and hour markers, but still still not too shabby. Uh, not up to the usual uh, Unimatic dive watch standards, I would say. I have a Unimatic uh, U1 SP, the NASA, the white one, and I, uh, I think that has a lot better loom, if I remember correctly. But it's not too bad for a, for a chrono that's... Uh, Chrono Dive Watch, which is not going to be doing any diving. So that looks uh, pretty... It's good enough. I was talking to a um, Unimatic friend of mine, a friend, a Unimatic friend, a guy who loves Unimatics, and he was saying, yeah, this, I like the watch, but maybe just a bit of a cash grab there by Unimatic. Honestly, I mean, what a limited edition watch isn't a, crash, uh, a cash grab? Omega's been doing it for years with a Speedmaster. Uh, so I don't see why... We should be giving uh, Unimatic any <laughs> any aggro for doing what they did. I think the watch deserves deserves. It's a nice backstory about the designer. I'm going to be writing about that on the Scottish Watches website. So be sure to catch the article, which is coming out. Uh, I hope the same day this video is going to be published on the Unboxing Channel, uh, and I'll be uh, writing a little piece on uh, the watch and the story behind it. So I think it's a good story, even though this watch has never been to space, but. Uh, None of the watches they sell on <laughs> have ever been to space. So there you go. That's all, that's all I've got for you, my friends. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the other videos on the Scottish Watches Unboxing website. There's lots of stuff there. Uh, something for everybody. That's all from Gigi at Time to Talk Watches. Signing off and goodbye and see you in the next one.